Hello there, my name is Ollie, and in this video I'm going to show you how the singleton pattern works by walking you through a real world problem it was created to solve and how it would solve it. But before I get to any code, let's talk a bit about the singleton pattern. So what is it? Well, it's a creational pattern that was created to allow a class to ensure that it has only one globally available instance. This is typically achieved by making the constructors private, making the class unclonable, and having the class store the instance of itself. The singleton pattern is often considered an anti-pattern because it introduces global state into an application and because it's often used when it isn't required, which introduces unnecessary restrictions. That being said, the pattern itself is often used inside other patterns such as dependency injection, factories, builders and facades. So let's take a look at some code, starting with the alerts class. This class is responsible for storing a collection of alerts generated during a request to a web application. The idea being that when a user performs an action within this application, such as updating their password, an alert or message would be generated to notify the user of what happened, i.e. whether it was successful or not. You've probably encountered these sort of alerts. They typically say things like your password has been successfully reset or your comment has been posted. So the alerts class will need a property to store all of these in. Next, it will need a method to add an alert. Alerts have types, so the first argument will be that. The value of this would most likely be success, warning, error, etc. This method is a fluent method, meaning that it returns the instance of itself. This is particularly useful if you need to queue up multiple alerts, allowing you to daisy chain method calls. Now that it has a way to store them, it will need a way to retrieve them, firstly by type, and secondly, all of them. As you can see, this class itself is simple. It has no dependencies, just an array of alerts, a way of adding them, and two ways of retrieving them. All in all, it does everything that it is supposed to do. The problem comes when it's time to use this. There are going to be, at the very least, two places in your code base where this class needs to be accessed. The first is probably within a controller method, and the second place is probably going to be inside the view, most likely the ones displaying the alerts. As you can see from this example controller method, a new alerts class is created, but never stored in a variable. Now you could amend this and pass the variable into the view. The view now has the alerts instance, but it's probably going to have to pass that around. If you're displaying these sort of alerts, you probably have a separate view or component that handles them, keeping their display logic in one place. There are also going to be other places within the application where you may want to access this class. Perhaps you have a piece of middleware that adds a warning alert because the user's subscription has expired. Maybe it's an event. Maybe it's a view composer that pulls alerts from the database and adds them for the display. Wherever it is and whatever it's doing, it's going to run into a problem. The property in the alerts class that contains the alerts will not persist across instances. You could get around this by making the property static, thus ensuring that it persists. But at that point, you might as well make the whole class static and avoid creating new instances. Making all of these methods static would make this class a servant class, also referred to as a helper or utility class. Now, the servant pattern is one that I cover in another video, but a general rule for it is that it shouldn't contain state. Since the alerts class has state in the form of the alerts property, it isn't a good candidate for that pattern. This is where the singleton comes to the rescue. Using the singleton pattern, we can make this class globally accessible by restricting the number of instances of it to one and by making the class itself responsible for creating and storing the instance. The first thing I need to do is restrict distanciation of this class. I can do this by adding a private or protected constructor. This constructor doesn't do anything because it doesn't need to. It just needs to be private so that it can't be accessed outside this class. Next, I want to prevent this class from being cloned. So again, I add an empty clone method. If you're unfamiliar with object cloning, I will be covering that and more on the topic of object construction in a separate video. But essentially, through use of the clone keyword in PHP, you can create a copy of an object. Much like with the constructor method, making this private will mean that the object can only be cloned from within this class. Now that the restrictions are in place, this class will need a place to store an instance of itself. Since we want that instance to persist, it will need to be a static property. This class will also need a way of retrieving the instance in the form of a static getter. The last problem here is that calling the getInstance method is going to throw an error because I'm accessing a property before it's initialized. This is actually where another creational pattern comes in, the lazy initialization pattern. 
I will also be covering this in another video, but simply put, it's all about only creating an instance of the class when it's required, which is precisely what we need to do the first time this method is called. Now, if the property isn't set, which is the check that needs to be performed for properties with types, it will populate it with a new instance of itself. If you wanted this class to be extended for some reason, you'd use static here, so the instance matched the class used, but it doesn't really make sense for me to extend this, so I'm going to leave it as self and actually mark the class as final. This alerts class is now a full singleton. No instance of it needs to be passed around and it's accessible globally. Adding new alerts just need to be chained after the get instance method, and retrieving any of the alerts will be done in the same way. You could take this further and use PHP's magic method calling functionality to make this appear as a servant class, but that's a topic for another video. While this class here is restricted to a single instance, there's nothing stopping you from supporting multiple. All you need to do is change the property and get instance method. You could also, unlike me, support subclassing, allowing other classes to extend it. In that situation, you'd also want to change the get instance method and the property so that it could store an instance per class. There is one variation to this pattern that you're most likely to encounter, particularly if you use Laravel. This variation doesn't restrict who can create a new instance of the class by allowing instances to be created externally and by providing a setter method to set the instance being used. To use this variation, you add a setter method and then you remove the private empty constructor and clone method. Since design patterns are templates or guides, you're free to experiment with them and see what you can do. In some instances, like the setter singleton, you can ignore some rules of the pattern to suit the requirements. If at all possible, however, you should try to stick to them. Ignoring too many or some of the core fundamental rules can make the whole pattern pointless. A prime example of this is dependency injection, where it is common for dependency injection containers to allow you to mark a class or object as a singleton so that the container only ever returns the same instance of it. This doesn't have all the restrictions of making the class a singleton itself, but it does serve the same purpose, particularly in an application built around dependency injection. Don't worry if you aren't familiar with dependency injection, that is a topic that I will be covering in another video. This has been a walkthrough of the singleton design pattern, what it is, how it works, and the problems it was designed to solve. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing more, remember to subscribe. And as always, if you have any feedback or questions, you can reach me on Twitter, Discord, or by email. Happy coding.